Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. What a wonderful blessing to be here on the Shabbat day. We bring this message to you with joy and gladness, hoping that you're enjoying your new year season. Lashana Tova. That means Happy New Year in Hebrew. Today we have a, an exciting study, a lecture on angels and demons. A lecture on angels and demons. Today we're going to talk about the different purposes of the angels and how Yehoshua created them and how some of these angels actually became devils or demonic and turned towards evil. And a lot of times people will know about some of the fallen angels, but we really want to get into some of the purposes of the godly angels, the righteous angels, and talk about them as well and their purposes concerning the stars and, and time and space and creation and so forth. All this information we want to bring forth to you to give you a fuller understanding of Yah's living creation. So we're going to start by saying a prayer. Blessed be thy name, Yehovah Elohim, Elohei Abraham Yitzchak Yisrael, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Torah Yehovah Lekol Devarim. We thank you, Yehovah, for all things. Bashem Bein Ka Yehoshua HaMashiach, and in, in your son's name, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Modim Anaknu Bishfil Chayenu Hayom, and we give thanks unto you for our life this day. Salak Lanu Yehovah Elohim Lekol Katayenu, and please forgive us for all of our iniquities. And wash us in the blood of the Lamb. And teach us your Torah. And write all of your words in our hearts. Uh, and we will do all of them. Um, we just give you thanks for the grace, for the favor for your blessings, for forgiveness, for mercy. And we thank you most high for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you for truth and for guidance. We even thank you for your correction, for you correct those who you love. We just thank you most high for this new year and this new season. And we pray for abundant grace upon all of the body of Kai Yeshua and the 12 tribes of Israel, and even the Gentiles called by thy name. We give you all praises, all honor and glory. In Yehoshua's holy name, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, so today we're going to talk about a lecture on angels and demons. We want to kind of focus on the roles and the purposes of each of these different divisions and so forth. But before we get into that, Sister Levati is going to welcome our family. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, family. Um, oh, you got to speak into that, Oh, yeah, I do have to All do right. that. <laughs> <laughs> my shalom family. Um, it's a lovely day. Um, Torah Yehoah for another week. Um, with new grace and new mercy, another opportunity for us to um, be better today than we were yesterday. Amen. Um, I'd like to start off by um, reminding you guys and thanking you first and foremost for Everything that you do, all the support continually. Okay. Thank you for taking time out to share your Shabbat with us. We greatly appreciate you all. Um, we pray for you all continually. Okay. We send all of okay. our love and prayers. Um, and we're, we wish you guys everything good and perfect. Um, do take this time that you can support the ministry. You can do that at the website at kayashua at gmail.com forward slash tithes and offerings. Click on the yellow donate button and whatever the Most High Yah moves you to do as far as alms, our donations, our tithes, feel free to do that. Yes. You can also do that through Zelle at kayashua at gmail.com or you can go to Cash App at dollar sign, cash, or dollar sign kayashua at gmail. Amen. Um, and I guess I will say Shabbat Shalom to everyone I can remember off my head. <laughs> okay. Shabbat Shalom to um, Sister Pamela Amen. and Brother Nartagus. We love you guys. Shabbat Shalom to Lee G and Sister Danielle. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Amit in the UK and his congregation. Mm -hmm. We thank you. Most I bless you guys. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Christelia. Shabbat Shalom to Yakelia 
and Shabbat Shalom to Italia. I know this if I do those three together, I don't forget anyone. Okay. <laughs> um, Shabbat Shalom to Natasha Irizarry. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Logic 1611. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to um, Brother Mark and Sister Lee. Yes. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Brother Marcus and Sister Isabel in California. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Ema Gwynn in California. That's right. Shabbat Shalom to Ima Eliana in Florida. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Anthony 2019. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to the Hood family. And Shabbat Shalom to the McCray family. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Z Metzger. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Herb Burns. Shabbat Shalom, Lisa Carson. Okay. Um, Y'all bless you and keep you. Um, Shabbat Shalom. To James April Milton Abu, uh, James Milton Holmes, brother Jr. Irene. Big Brother Irene, Shabbat Thanks. Shalom to you. We love and miss you and look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Tracy. Amen. Um, Shabbat Shalom, of course, to um, Gladys Wilson. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Kenya. Shabbat Shalom to Amari Yehuda. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Benjamin Gaines. Mm -hmm. Shabbat Shalom to Mikhail Taylor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to... I love to the names. Me. I always love yeah. the names, right? Yeah, names are um, good. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to Marsha P. Okay. Shabbat Shalom to Liz Powell. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to Moses and Kiki. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Um, Shabbat Shalom to... Um, Yvonne Harding mm -hmm. and most importantly special shout out special Shabbat Shalom to um, brother Yohanatan and sister Zinni Amen. and um, brother True and sister Shai Hallelujah. and uh, brother Zay and sister Jason Amen. and with that oh Shabbat Shalom to Angela Burns and Dang. Clarence in California um, and I think Oh, Shabbat Shalom, Brandon McNeil. Sorry. Didn't Shabbat Shalom. Um, <laughs> and with that being said, uh, reminder, guys, after the sun goes down, mm. after Shabbat, do feel free to go online to HebrewIsraelitesCriptures.com, and you can add to your collection, your book collection. Okay. Um, in front of me, I have the His Word Gold Edition written for us, by us, Hallelujah. to us. Um, the number one. Yes, best selling Hebrew Israelite scriptures, period. Uh, Israelite Bible made for Hebrews by Hebrews. Hallelujah. Excellently Hallelujah. rated. Praise praise be to the Most High. Yeah. Tell that you're Top rated. Hallelujah. It's an honor. It's an honor praise to be God. used. It's an honor. Hallelujah. Uh, we also have, again, the only of its kind um, mm. The Book and Secrets of Enoch. It is in English and in Hebrew. Again, um, we'll be reading a lot of that today. Hallelujah. Today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looking forward to that. Okay. Um, again, you cannot find another of this kind. <laughs> nope. It has only been translated from the Hebrew text to English by this ministry. Praise Yehoah and Yehoshua um, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What else we got here? We also have the Testament of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. uh, the Testament of Yahshua is again in Hebrew and English. It um, has Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Book of Revelations. Um, so if you're, you know, learning Hebrew, learning to read it, it's a very good book to add to your collection. Um, very good book to ask you. Yes. yes, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And for you name seekers, we got the His Word Concordance Name Book. Amen. Um, not only does it have names here, you know, different names if you're looking for a name, but um, I believe it has like the different seven stems of uh, Hebrew. Right um, the seven stems are mentioned um, in the Enoch book of Enoch, Testament of Yahshua, and the gold and the silver editions. And uh, Lost Acts of the Apostles, I believe. But this one has a lot of Hebraic thought in it. It breaks down 
the names of the books of the Bible and what each name of each book means. And when you put them together, that forms a prophecy. The names of the uh, New Testament books forms a prophecy about Yehoshua. The names of the 12 tribes of Israel forms a prophecy. The names of the children of Edom forms a prophecy. Um, we have all of that, like, uh, like secret breakdowns inside of this book that you can't find anywhere else. Well, there you Hallelujah. Go, there Plus you go. all of the names mentioned in the scripture and their meanings and so forth. So it's excellent um, precursor to learning the language. So this is what we recommend to get people used to Hebrew before we actually introduce a Hebrew learning book for them. So this is like kind of like a prerequisite to get everybody in Hebraic thought. Like class 101. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Plus wonderful pictures in there too. Yes, wonderful. All right, and um, family, as you all are aware, um, Jediah the second, little Jediah, has his first book project. Yes. Um, and it's Yosef, the lost prince of Israel. Yes. Now, um, so you can see, it is available in a hardcover. Mm-hmm. And it's available in a soft cover. That's right. And this this was written for the youth um, of our nation, the youth of the Hebrews by the youth of Hebrews. Yes. Um, but adults, it's also a very good read for you as well. A lot of wonderful photos um, inside. Oh, man. As you can see, precepts in blue um, for Old Testament. Okay. Um, it, it's very lovely. We're so very proud of him um, for his hard work and diligence. Yes. May the Most High Yah continue to bless you and increase yourself. So. And. Man, that's a lot of books. It is. <laughs> it's a lot of books. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is, it is. Praise the Most I thought he was getting ready to do the calendar. And I'm like, oh, there's one more book. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of forgot this one. And we have family. The Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles, um, the book that really mm. details and outlines um, the walk of the apostles when they were on earth, the yes. different things that they had to um, endure through. Um, very enlightening. Yes, and, indeed. Um, one of my favorites. It's indeed. a very, very, very powerful, powerful, good, uh, good read, very powerful. Um, yeah, so this is a must-have to your collection. Mm -hmm. And then, last but not least, and for the season that we're actually in, most Indeed. importantly, we have the official... Cain, the official, the first, and the first. official. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Jehovah. The first and the official Enoch calendar yes. for 2021 and 2022. Amen. Um, I'll give you a little sneak peek here. As you can see, look at those mm. pictures. I love it. Beautiful. I love like, it. Absolutely beautiful. Any page you turn to. Any page you turn to. Oh. Well, I'll do one more. Let's see. Okay. <coughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Praise the most high. Um, but as you can see, um, it is filled with information, filled with knowledge, um, filled with wisdom. Um, you have your renewed months. Yes. You have your two equinox, your two solstices. That's right. You have the months in um, their Hebraic thought or yes. the Hebraic names um, and the dates. You have the Maserot, um, the meaning of these. You also have scriptures. Like, for instance, here you've got the ram, the first symbol of Yehoshua. As the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. And that's Revelations 13 Amen. and 8. Um, and as you can see, we just came out of the season of the time of release. Yes, which you can only find here oh. on the original Enoch calendar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Only here. So family, again, do um, take your time out to um, visit the book library after... Shabbat is over. Okay. So after sundown, HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com. Um, and you can also do your donations, your tithes, and your offerings at kayashua at gmail forward slash tithes and offerings. 
click on the yellow donate button there and whatever your hardest move to do you can do that there you can also go to zelle at kayashua at gmail.com or cash app dollar sign kayashua hallelujah we love you family many thanks hallelujah so we're going to get into our lecture for today uh, a lecture on angels and demons what we're going to do is um first i want to just go to the calendar again we're in the month of aviv this day today would be let me get it down to right oops excuse me for one moment you need this yes please I'm hand this to you thank you so much there you go All right. um today would be aviv the 10th aviv the 10th is where we are today this would signify the time when Yehoshua entered into Jerusalem upon a donkey. And he was examined and questioned by the scribes and Pharisees all the way up until here. He was found blameless. So he actually made a perfect sacrifice. So it says in the book of Exodus chapter 12 that on the 10th, between the 10th of Aviv and the 14th of Aviv, is when we select our lamb. This is the time to get your lamb. So let me put that in big letters. Get your lamb. So you want to get your lamb now. Um, in this week to come, we'll, we'll starting, I guess, on Sunday or somewhere around there after that up until Wednesday evening, the midst of the week. So we have the midst of the week colored here in purple. So you can always keep track of time revolving around the equinox, the original equinox when the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day of the week, which represents Jehoshua and the assembly. Okay? Would you like me to read that for you? Yes, please. Let's go, let's go there. All right. So I'm in the book of Exodus, Shemot in Hebrew, chapter 12 and verse 3. I'll get there with you. Hallelujah. Exodus 12 and 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Yisrael. Mm -hmm. All the congregation, everybody. Saying, mm -hmm. in the tenth day of this month. The tenth of Aviv, or Nisan. It's also, the first month is also known as Nisan in Aramaic. Go ahead. In the tenth day of this month, mm -hmm. they shall take to them every man a lamb. Cain. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for unhoused. Amen. So this is when we uh, start to do so. A lamb without blemish. A male of the first year. So Yehoshua is without sin. The male, the firstborn son of the father Yah. Hallelujah. So that's what this represents. So again, the calendar details all of these things like no one else does. Hallelujah. So you want to get yours from the 10th of Aviv up into the 14th. That's when you select your lamb. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get into the study today. We're going to talk about a lecture on angels and demons. Let's turn to the book of Enoch, chapter 82. The book and secrets of Enoch, chapter 82. All right. Um, we're going to read the first few verses, the first three verses in Hebrew. Um, for you, that would be page 115. Um, we're going to read the first few verses in Hebrew and in English, all right? Let me know when you're ready and we'll get started. The book of Enoch chapter 82, the charge given to Kanok, the four intercalary days, the stars which lead the seasons and the months. This is what we're going to start reading. Okay, we're going to start in Hebrew. Verse 82. So, we want you to put your Hebraic thinking caps on and be ready to hear the word of God in its original context. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Where Ata Metushalak, Baini, Kal Ele Asapir Laka, were Katavti Laka, were Galiti Laka, uh, and now Methuselah, my son, 
all these things that I shall recount or tell thee and that I have written to you with a wagaliti and that I have revealed unto you hako wenatati all of this that I have given luka unto you separim al kaha ele all these I have given unto you in books all of these wa ata bani tishmor et ha separim and keep these books miyad on hand or close by abika the books of your father keep them close by lema an tim seram i'm not sure what that is le dorot ha olam keep them close by for each generations of the world go ahead the book of enoch chapter 82 mm -hmm. kanok in hebrew king verse 1 and now my son matushalak king all these things I am recounting to thee. Methuselah or Methuselah means metu comes from the word, the Hebrew word, uh, I hope I'm spelling it right, uh, mot or mate, which means death. And shalak over here means to, uh, let me write that here, death. And shalak, I'll put it on this side means to send so when Methuselah died it sent forth the flood hallelujah so Methuselah go ahead and all these things I am recounting to thee mm -hmm. and writing down for thee and I have revealed to thee everything everything and given thee books concerning all these Cain. And thou preserve, my son, the books from thy father's hand, and that thou teach them to the generations of the world. Hallelujah. Verse 2 in Hebrew. Kakma natati laka. I have given wisdom to you. This is wisdom, kakma. Ul baneka. And unto your children... I share Yehiu Laka that shall be unto you. Lema an I share Yitznum in order that uh, I think you might have rest, I believe. Uh, live Nahum for their children. Ledorot et Hakakma. And that the generations would have this wisdom. Hakakma Hazot. Haola. Haola. Al Makat uh Makasha Tim Makasha Tom um and that you may consider or think upon these things. Go ahead. Verse two I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children uh -huh. that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations. Cain. This wisdom oh. is high above their thoughts. High above their thoughts, their thinking. Hallelujah. And verse 3. Wa ham vinim zot lo yanumu wa ha azinu a lil mod et ha hakma hazot wa naama le ok leha a mema ak le taawe. Desired food. Go ahead. Verse 3. And those who understand it shall not sleep. Mm hmm. But shall listen that they may learn this wisdom. Amen. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Hallelujah. So these words are so important for this generation. And he gave it to his son Methuselah to write down as well, all the way down to the last generation in which we live. So we want to talk about the angels and the demons. So we're going to stay in this chapter and we're going to go down to... Verse, actually, let's go first to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Let's go there first. Hebrews chapter 1. That's one of my very favorite books, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. 
Okay. Hebrews chapter 1, we'll start at verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Elohim, who at sundry times and in divers manners mm -hmm. spake in times past unto the fathers by, their pro by the prophets, okay. hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So in days of old, he spoke to Methuselah. Methuselah. Enoch, so forth, the patriarchs and the prophets, but then he sent his own son, Yehoshua Mashiach, to speak unto us today. Go ahead. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, mm. by whom also he made the worlds. Right. Amen. So we're going to look at how Yehoshua made the worlds today, and how when he made the worlds, he made an invisible world, and he made a visible world, and within them he made angels. Verse 3, mm -hmm. who being the brightness of his glory mm -hmm. and the express image of his person. Mm -hmm. So he was the brightness of the glory of Yah, but we also have an angel that's the brightness of Yehoshua. His name is Oriel. Oriel means Elohim is my light. So he was the first visible angel created. We'll get to all that. Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, mm -hmm. and upholding all things by the word of his power. Right. When he had by himself purged our sins, Amen. sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He obtained a more excellent name than they. So Yahoshua is the first theophoric name. It's a name with the name of Yah embedded within it. All of the angels have El embedded in their name. So his name is more excellent than theirs because Yahoshua has Yah within it. Amen. Verse 5. For unto which of the angels... Said he at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Did he say that to Mikael, Gabriel, any of them? No. Mm -mm. Go ahead. And again, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Amen. Go ahead. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of Elohim worship him. All the angels of Elohim have to worship him. Go ahead. And of the angels, he said, Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers and flaming fire? So we're going to see today how the Most High Yah and the Son Yehoshua made the angels from flaming fire. This was the first element through which he created the angels and even Satan. They were created by elements of fire in the very beginning. Go ahead. Verse 8. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. So we're made in the image of Elohim, yet we're made of flesh. The angels are made of fire. So we are in a state of um, it, uh, mortality where the angels are immortal until Yah gives us a glorified body, a body free from the flesh and made in the Ruach like unto them. Hallelujah. But what makes the potential for uh, us, mankind, to be greater than even the angels is the fact that our body is less than theirs. Angels have bodies made of fire and made of the spirit. So angels can be holy and set apart and upright and righteous, but they cannot sacrifice. Adam, mankind, Adam and his children and descendants, being that we are made of flesh and we are Mortal, we can make sacrifices, and the angels cannot. 
Therefore, we can fast. We can afflict ourselves. We can do these things that the angels can't do. And if we're found worthy enough and we are set apart enough, we can be uh, arise to a higher level than that of the angels. And this is why Satan was jealous of Adam. He hated Adam. He hated mankind and refused to submit himself to clay when he was made of fire. And we'll get to those scriptures today. Angels can be set apart, but they cannot sacrifice. The children of men can be set apart and can sacrifice if they so choose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 9. Right. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Elohim, thy Elohim, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Amen. So Yehoshua is exalted above all. When he, This is what happened. This was prophetic of him when he rose back up to heaven, the first of the uh, first fruit. This is how the Father, Yah, received him. He anointed him with a, the greatest um, uh, anointing above all of his fellows. Go ahead. Verse 10. And thou, Adonai, of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth, mm -hmm. and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Mm -hmm. They shall perish, Cain. but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same. Amen. And thy years shall have no end. Amen. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit thou at my right hand, mm. until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And that's the reason why the kingdom has not yet come, because the Father is still making the enemies of his under uh, uh, into a footstool under Yahushua's feet. Once that has been accomplished, then we'll enter into the final kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So enough souls have to join the side of the righteous, and then judgment will be fulfilled. And then the rest will be footstool under the foot of the Messiah. Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? Set forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So the ministering spirits are the angels. The angels are actually sent forth to minister to those who are called of the Most High. That's their purpose. So they're actually servants on our behalf. But they're greater than us because the greatest is those who serve. Didn't Yahushua say that to his disciples when he washed their feet? But we have the opportunity to serve the kingdom of heaven through our sacrifices, through our obedience, and through our set-apartness. So again, our sacrifice ability is what makes us have the potential to be greater than some of the angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's turn to the book of 2 Enoch now. Let's go to 2 Enoch chapter 11. Calendar, my bad. <laughs> Here we go. So many books now. The books like it's just just more and more yeah. to choose from. <clears throat> okay. Let's start. Yahweh speaks with Enoch face to face. The Secrets of Enoch, chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Amen. And Yehoah summoned me, right. and he said unto me, Kanok, sit down on my left with Gabriel. So this is how we know who covers the left-hand side of the throne. Gabriel. Yehoshua sits on the right-hand side, Gabriel on the left-hand side. This is reiter reiterated in the book of Luke chapter 1 or chapter 2 
when Gabriel visits Yosef and Mary and Elizabeth. He says, I am Gabriel who uh, stands in the presence of the Most High. So we know Yehoshua's on the right-hand side of that presence. Gabriel's on the left. Amen. Verse 2. And I bowed down to Yehoah. And Yehoah said unto me, Come up, all that you see, all that abides still, and all that passes away was made by me. Mm -hmm. All that is eternal and all, or immortal and all that is mortal was made by Yah. Go ahead. And I have made known to you from the beginning all that I have created from non existence and the visible things. From the invisible. The visible things from the invisible things is what we're going to talk about today. There are two worlds, so to speak, or two creations. There's a creation that we cannot see. It is invisible. And then we have the creation that was made in the account of Genesis chapter 1, which is all visible. You can see light. You can see the sun, the moon, the stars. You can see heaven and earth. You can see water. The animals, the birds, the fish, mankind, beasts, all of these things are visible. So in the beginning represents time. But Yehoah transcends time and space. So he existed before time existed. And that which is immortal has no time. A lecture on angels and demons. Let's go. Hallelujah. So everything mm -hmm. that we can see came from everything that we can't see. That we see. cannot see. And that's why we need faith. Mm -hmm. Because faith is a belief in that which is not seen. not seen. So if you don't have faith, you cannot operate in that kingdom. You have no belief in what you can't see, so you can't function. In the spirit. This is why faith is mandatory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. The secrets of Enoch, chapter 11, and we're at verse 5. Go ahead. For even to my angels have I not made known my secrets. Mm, what an honor Enoch had. And Amen. what an honor we have to read this. And I have not told them concerning their establishment, nor have they understood my infinite creation mm -hmm. that I have made known to you today. Amen. Moreover, before anything visible existed. Before anything visible existed. Again, Genesis 1 speaks of that which is visible. There was a creation before Genesis 1. There was a creation before the Garden of Eden. And this is that world and that kingdom that we want to be a part of, which takes faith. Now, the world says, if you can see it, then I'll believe it. That's what the world says. So the world does not have faith. You have to show me. But faith is a knowing and a belief in that which is unseen. So the kingdom of this world is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Verse 6. Moreover, mm -hmm. before anything visible existed, I alone existed. That's why for those who understand Hebrew, the first verse of Genesis is better sheet. Bara Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim created. Better sheet starts with the letter bait. Yehoshua is the olive and tau. Right. So all that is written starts with bait and not with olive because Yehoshua is the olive. So that shows you that all that is visible came out of the invisible. That's why olive has no sound. It represents the invisible. Aleph alone has no sound unless you add a vowel point to it, a nikud, representing that which is not seen. And all that is seen and all that is pronounced comes forth out of that which is unpronounceable and invisible. Go ahead. 
Moreover, before anything visible existed, I alone existed and crossed over from what does it mean to cross over what ivrit ivrit what's ivrit mean hebrew ivrit hebrew yahoshua hamashiach is the first hebrew he's the first one to cross over let's show it hallelujah so Hallelujah. We're in verse 6. Ki old lifne hayok. And moreover, before hayok, that which existed, kal, kol nira, that which was visible existed, ani levadi, I was alone. Over. The Hebrew root word um ayin bait and resh okay that is where the word hebrew comes from let's look it up ayin bait resh h 5674 to cross over all right to to uh use in a widely use very widely of any transition okay uh to alienate to alter Yehoshua is not of this world he's an alien to this world um to alter hmm? beyond beyond yes he is beyond this world we are beyond this world, carry over, to come on, to, to cross over the River Jordan, to cross over the Red Sea, all these things we had to do as Hebrew. So let's look up the word Hebrew. Um, Hebrew. word that has a definite okay well here we got it at the very bottom here can y'all see that there ivri ayin bait resh and it has a yod at the end which means like it like a, a hebrew white or uh, someone of that language or that nation when you had that yod at the end okay like if you say israelite in hebrew is yisraeli that yod at the end means like it okay from the word H5677. Eber. There's a patriarch named Eber, which comes again from that same root, which means to cross over. Okay. The region across. Use only uh, adverbially to cross the Jordan, to go beyond passage over, so forth, so on. That's what it means to be Hebrew. So Yehoshua HaMashiach is the first Hebrew. He is the first one to cross over. He is the one from beyond. He came from the invisible and crossed over to the visible. He comes from the east and will go to the west. He does all these things. He crossed over. He, he transcended death and went beyond death to resurrect his own self and go back up to the Father on the right hand. Hallelujah. So Eber, the patriarch, means Hebrew. Ivri means Hebrew. And Eberite, which means Hebrew. A descendant of Eber, a Hebrew. Hallelujah. So we see right here the same word. This is a different form of the same word. Yehoshua cross over. Hallelujah. He is a Hebrew. Go ahead. I alone existed. Start. start over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 6. Moreover, before anything visible existed, mm -hmm. I alone existed and crossed over from between the invisible, like the sun from the east to west, mm. and from west to and east. From west to east. Hallelujah. But even the sun has rest. 
and I found no rest, for I was creating all things. Hallelujah. So this is what happens in the original account of the creation. And now Yah is explaining these secrets to Kanuk that even the angels did not know. And we don't fully know if we just read Genesis. We get an account of creation, but this fills in so much more of what happened. All right. Verse 7. And I determined to establish foundations. And? And to create the visible creation. To create the visible creation. This is where Genesis picks up. This is Genesis. The visible creation is what we read in Genesis. But there was a creation that was invisible. Go ahead. And I gave commandments from on high. Even the first one to let the visible come forth from the invisible. And Uriel came forth exceedingly mighty. Uriel means light of Elohim. Uriel is the first visible angel. But there were three before Uriel. Halel, Mikael, and Gabriel. Let's go to it. Let's turn to the book of the Gospel of Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Hallelujah. I think chapter 4. Hebrew Israelite scriptures, gold or silver edition. The Gospel of Bartholomew. This is why those books are included to give so much more of a background on the gospel, on creation, and so forth. All right. The Gospel of Bartholomew. Let's start at verse 10, chapter 4, verse 10. The book of, or I'm sorry, the Gospel of Bartholomew, Bartholomew in Hebrew, verse, uh, chapter 4, starting at verse 10. Okay. And as he thus spake, Yehoshua raised him up and said unto him, Bartholomew, wilt thou see the adversary of men? Do you want to see Satan? Hmm. Thou bold heart. Go ahead. I tell thee that when thou beholdest him, not thou only, but the rest of. This is a break in the text that we had. Go ahead. So that's why it's had the dot, dot, dot there. Go ahead. But they all said unto him, Adonai, let us behold him. So all of the apostles said, yeah, we want to see him. Go ahead. And led and I'm sorry, verse 12. And he led them down from the Mount of Olives and looked wrathfully upon the angels that kept hell, Sheol, mm -hmm. and beckoned unto Mikael to sound the trumpet in the height of the heavens. Mm. And Mikael sounded, and the earth shook. And Belial came up. And Satan was Belial came up out of hell. Go ahead. Being held by 660 angels and bound with fiery chains. Mm, 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 mm. That's how many angels it took to carry this Satan up out of hell. Verse 13. And the length of him was 1,900 cubits and his breadth 700 cubits. You remember when we did the math before, 1,900 cubits is about a little bit higher than um, a half of a mile tall. That's how tall Satan is. He's about a half a mile in height. Go ahead. <clears throat> and the length of him was 1,900 cubits and the breadth 700 cubits. One wing of him eighty, and his face was like a lightning of fire, and his eyes full of darkness. If thine eye be evil, 
thy whole body be filled with darkness. Mm. And out of his nostrils came a stinking smoke. Mm -hmm. And his mouth was as the gulf of precipice. Now, out of his nostrils came a stinking smoke. Stench um, is the opposite of that which smells good. And that which smells good um, to the presence of the Most High is prayer. Our prayer is like a sweet savor, a sweet smelling incense before the throne of Yah. So coming forth out of Satan is abomination. His prayers, his speaking is abomination before the throne of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And out of his nostrils came a stinking smoke. In nostrils or nose in Hebrew is the word Aleph. Aleph and Fe, or Fe Sophie, which means nostrils which also means wrath. So he is angry. Let's look this up. Let's go back to some Hebrew. Let's look up Aleph. Aleph, face of fee. Okay. H sixty six hundred thirty nine. Here we go. You read that? Af. Af. Strong's word, number H639. Properly, the nose or nostril. Uh huh. Hence, the face and occasionally a person. Also, from the rapid breathing and passion, anger. Anger. So, you know, when, your nose, when you're angry, your nose flares up. You breathe intensely so out of his nose came a stench his anger is an abomination mm, go ahead um before countenance face mm -hmm. forbearing go ahead forehead mm -hmm. um let's look suffering. Here. suffering nose, nose nostrils. nostrils snout worthy wrath so that's what comes forth from his nose. Anger, wrath, stench, mm. abomination. Mm. Mm. An unclean wrath, an unclean anger. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And his mouth was as the gulf of a precipice. And the one of his wings was four score cubits. And straightway, when the apostles saw him, they fell to the earth on their faces and became as dead. Mm. But Yehoshua came near and raised the apostles and gave them a ruach of power. Amen. And he saith unto Bartalmai, come near, Bartalmai, and trample with thy feet on his neck. And he will tell thee. And he will tell thee his work. What, what it is. is and how he deceiveth men. Amen. So now we're going to jump down to the part where he is explaining how things started. Hallelujah. Let's start at verse 26. Right. Well, that's 25, actually. Go ahead. Okay. The book of our, the Gospel of Bartholomew, Bartholomew in Hebrew. Uh, chapter 4, starting at verse 25. Uh -huh. And Belial answered and said, If thou wilt know my name, at the first I was called Satanel, which is interpreted a messenger of Elohim. But when I rejected the image of Elohim... Who's the image of Elohim? Adam. Adam. When he rejected Adam, he was called... My name was called Satan. Mm, Satan. The adversary. The enemy. When he rejected Adam. Go ahead. That is an angel that keepeth hell. Mm. And again, Bartalmai saith unto him, Reveal unto me all things and hide nothing from me. 
And he said unto him, I swear unto thee by the power of the glory of Elohim that even if I would hide aught, I cannot. For he is near that would convict me. For if I were able, I would have destroyed you like one of them that were before you. So he was held in check by the power of Yehoshua. He couldn't harm Bartholomew. And he can't harm us either when the power of Yehoshua dwells within us. When the rock is in us, he cannot harm us. Go ahead. Hallelujah. For indeed, I was formed the first angel. What? He was formed the first angel. Go ahead. For when Elohim made the heavens, he took a handful of fire and formed me first. Doesn't that precept what we read in the book of Hebrews? His ministering spirits made of flames of fire. Mikael second. Cain. Gabriel third. And Uriel fourth. Uriel the fourth. So that what does that tell us? That tell us that tells us that. Hallel, who is now Satan, Mikael, and Gabriel were in the invisible world. When Yehoshua made cre the visible creation, Oriel was the first. Mm. Let's go back to it. Uh, Book and Secrets of Enoch. The Secrets of Enoch, chapter 2. Verse 8. Um, the Secrets of Enoch, chapter 2. Chapter 11, oh, Sliga. Yeah, okay. 11, sorry, okay. verse 8. Chapter 11, starting at verse 8. Yes. And I gave commandments from on high, even the first one to let the visible come forth from the invisible. To let the visible come forth from the invisible. And Oriel came forth exceedingly mighty. Right, so now Oriel is coming forth from the invisible, from the visible. So he's the first one made visible, but Hallel, who is Satan, Mikael, and Gabriel are already existing in the invisible. Mm -hmm. The two cherubim angels covering the throne of Yehoshua, right? So we have Yehoshua and Halal who covered the throne of the Father. And Mikael and Gabriel covered the throne of Yehoshua. Okay. Verse 9. And I saw him, and behold, he had great light within mm -hmm. him. And I said unto him, Oriel. Bring forth, and it shall come to pass that the visible shall come forth from thee. Let there be light. Mm. Oreo. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 11. And he brought forth, and a strong light broke out. And I was in the midst of the light. Well, Yehoshua was in the midst of that light. Go ahead. And the light shook, and light came forth from within it. And the great world appeared, and every creation that I thought to create. Which was visible. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Go keep going. And I saw that it was good, and I established my throne, and I sat upon it. And to the light I said, Ascend on high, mm -hmm. and place yourself above the throne, and you shall be the foundation for the highest things. Mm. And there is nothing above the light. Right. And I stooped down again, and I beheld above my throne, and I called forth a second time to the lowermost parts, and I said, Let the visible come out and be cast from the invisible. And it came forth and drew out hard matter and weighty and very dark. So now we have a separation of the two natures, that which is spiritual and that which is carnal. 
that which is light being separated from that which is dark, that which is above from that which is beneath. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And I said, Break forth and become lengthened, and let visible existence be brought forth from thee. Mm -hmm. And a vast dark world came out and was brought forth, and all of the creation beneath was made. Mm. So when we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, can you get that real quick? Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's look. Let's check the precepts. Does this line up with the book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Amen. And the earth was without form mm. and void. And? And darkness, darkness was, was upon the face Hallelujah. of Hallelujah. And the Ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the Look waters. at the precepts. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Enoch. So for all those who weren't sure whether Enoch was an inspired word, it speaks for itself. Okay. Let's go back to Enoch. All right. The Secrets of Enoch, chapter 11, starting at verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I said, break forth and become lengthened, and let visible existence be brought forth from thee. Okay, so that's again how we prove that there are two worlds. So now, when we read in the account in Genesis, it says, let the visible existence be brought forth. From the so Genesis creation is the visible creation, but the invisible creation already existed. Hallelujah. So, but we want to talk about the angels, right? All right, so now let's go down. Um, now we're going to go down to day two Satan, Mikael, and Gabriel existed from the invisible world but the rest of the angels apparently were created from the visible world let's start at verse 27 well, well 26 so we can see it was evening and henceforth it was morning and it was the first day we are in the secrets of Enoch, chapter 11, starting at verse 26. And it was evening, and henceforth it was morning, and it was the first day. Mm -hmm. Thus I fixed the circles of heaven, and I said, Let the waters that are under the heavens beneath be gathered together to one gathering place. Uh -huh. And a dry place appeared, and it was so. And from the appearance, I created large, hard stones, mm -hmm. and I caused the stones to stick together, and the dry place I called dry land. Mm -hmm. And for that in the midst of the earth, I called valleys, and it was deep. And I gathered the sea to one place, and I joined it with the sand. Mm -hmm. And I said to the sea, Behold, I have appointed for you an eternal border. That's why the water doesn't pass the shore. Not because it can't, because Jehoshua told it not to. Only for certain instances, like a storm. Other than that, that's the boundaries. Everything has Torah. Everything has a law. Everything that is created has to abide by law. Even the waters. And I said to the sea, Behold, I have appointed for you an eternal border, and your water shall not break it. Mm -hmm. And thus I fixed the firmament, and I made it dry above from the waters. That day I called the first of creation, and it was evening and morning again, and it was day two. Go ahead and... And all the 
host of heaven I formed by a measure of fire. Mm, all the hosts of heaven are formed by what? A measure of fire. A measure of fire. So let's go now to the Gospel of Bartholomew, chapter 4, verse 28. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoying the study so far? Yes. The lecture? All right. The Gospel of Bartholomew. Chapter, chapter four. 4. Beginning at verse 28. Mm -hmm. For indeed, I was formed the first angel. Mm -hmm. For when Elohim made the heavens... He took a handful of fire and formed me first. Mm, 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 mm. King. Oh, one point. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go back to Enoch. And all the hosts of heaven are formed by a measure of fire. Go ahead. Verse 35. And my eye looked upon the very strong and hard stones. And from the gleam of my eye, the lightning received its nature of water and fire. The water and the fire, these do not quench each other, nor do they dry up the other. So lightning is a mixture of fire and water. And one, go ahead. And therefore is the lightning one. Mm -hmm. And it shines brighter than the sun. Mm. And you ever see lightning shine at night? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it light the whole sky like the sun was out? And that's just one little strike that glimpses for a, a, a blinking of an eye and disappear? Go ahead. And it is softer than water and harder than rough stone. Mm-hmm. And from the stone I hewed out a great fire. And from the fire I created the officers of the host. Ten troops of incorporeal angels and fiery weapons. And their vestures is a flaming fire. Let's go to Gospel of Bartholomew 4 and 54. The Gospel of Bartholomew. Actually, let's start at 4 and 52. Chapter 4, starting at verse 52. Mm -hmm. But Satan said, Suffer me, and I will tell thee how I was cast down into this place and how Yehoah did make man. This is the visible creation. Go ahead. I was going to and fro in the world, mm -hmm. and Elohim said unto Mikael, Bring me a clod from the four corners of the earth, right, and water out of the four rivers of the Garden of Eden. And when Mikael brought them, Elohim formed Adam in the regions of the east. So he took a clod, and he took water, and made clay. When you take soil and water, that makes mud. Right? So he took this and he formed Adam from mud, from, from soil, and from water. Water representing the Ruach. So he put his Ruach in dust of the earth. Go ahead. And shaped the clod, which was shapeless, and stretched sinews, muscles, and veins upon it, mm -hmm. and established it with joints. And he worshipped him himself for his own sake first. So Mikael worshipped the idol of Yah or the image of Yah. So Adam was made of clay but formed like the son of man like Yehoshua. And now the angels were supposed to worship mankind Adam but now the fallen angels have gotten man to worship idols. So now we take images 
that we make of clay, wood, stone, gold, silver, and we bow down to these things being taught and misled of Satan because Satan didn't want to bow down to us. So you see where idolatry started from. Satan refused to bow to Adam, the image of Yah. So instead he makes Adam bow down to various images of himself and other things lower than man. Whereby causing the great controversy in heaven, idolatry. Mikael was the first to give obeisance unto mankind. Didn't it say that the angels are ministering spirits of those who are saved? They're supposed to minister to us. But they're greater than us. But the very righteous have a, a capacity and potential to surpass that of the angels. Go ahead. Um, we're in the Gospel of Bartholomew, chapter 4, um, in the middle of verse 53. Mm -hmm. And when Mikael brought them, Elohim formed Adam in the regions of the east and shaped the clod, which was shapeless, stretched sinews and veins upon it mm -hmm. and established it with joints. Mm -hmm. And he worshipped him. He worshipped him. Himself for his own sake first. For his own sake first. So Mikael reverenced the image of Yah. So he's the highest angel. Go ahead. Because he was the image of Elohim. Because he was the image of Elohim. Therefore he worshipped him. But Satan has us worshipping images of, of, of animals, beasts, other men. Instead of the true most high Yah. He inverted it. Go ahead. Verse 54. And when I came from the ends of the earth, Mikael said, Worship thou. Worship thou the image of Elohim, mm. which he hath made according to his likeness. But I said, I, I am fire, fire. Of fire. Of fire. I was the first angel formed and shall worship and shall worship clay and matter. So we see matter being formed when we read in Enoch. That which was dark and came, that was the matter. So you see the beginning of pride now. So you see idolatry. And then you see pride. Because now that he's made from fire and Adam, Adam is made from clay or earth, he says fire is greater than that. I'm not going to bow down to that. But it's in the image of Yah. You must bow down to it. Go ahead. Verse 55. And Mikael saith to me, Worship, lest Elohim be wroth with thee. Mm. But I said to him, Elohim will not be wroth with me, but I will set my throne over against his throne, mm. and I will be as he is. So now he says, you know what? I'm going to sit my throne next to... If I got to bow down to this image, then I'm going to sit my throne next Above that of the Most High. Or even equal to that of the Most High. So now we see blasphemy. We see the pride. We see idolatry. And we see blasphemy. This was the great controversy. Go ahead. A lecture on angels and demons. Then was Elohim wroth with me. Mm. And cast me down having commanded the windows of heaven to be opened. Mm. And, if, and when I was cast down, he asked also the 600 that were under me if they would worship. But they said, like as we have seen the first angel do, mm. neither will we worship him that is less than ourselves. So what the scripture says about a servant? He's not above his master. I, right. He has to bend his ear to the door. Yeah. And serve them forever. forever. So now that they pin their ear to the door of Satan, they have to serve him forever. Mm. And the servant is not above his master. So if Satan's cast out of hell, I mean, cast out of heaven into hell, mm. so do the other angels who followed him. Go ahead. 
Then were the 600 also cast down by him with me. And when we were cast down upon the earth, we were senseless for 40 years. This is the importance of going in the wilderness for 40 years. Because Satan and his angels were blinded for 40 years when they were cast down to earth from heaven. Go ahead. And when the sun shone forth seven times brighter than fire, suddenly I awaked. And I looked about and saw the 600 that were under me senseless. And I awaked my son, Sapson, and took him to counsel how I might deceive the man on whose account I was cast out of the heavens. So now he has a vendetta against humankind, mankind from that point moving forward and hated Adam and Eve. So the fallen angels were already in the earth, but Adam and Kawa were in the garden. The garden was set apart from the rest of the earth. And once they were cast out of the garden for their sin, then they had to encounter evil because the other fallen angels were out there as well. A lecture on angels and demons. Go ahead. Verse 59. And thus did I contrive it. I took a vial in my hand and scraped the sweat from off my breast and the hair of mine armpits, and washed myself in the springs of the waters whence the four rivers flow out. Some women like to lay under their husband's armpit when they lay in the bed. <laughs> this is where that comes from, I guess. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And Kawa drank of it, mm. and desire came upon her. For if she had not drunk of that water, I should not have been able to deceive her. Mm. All right, just stop there. Okay. A lecture on angels and demons. Wow, this is heavy, is it not? Yes. But it's truth and it's fact, and we need to know these things. And we need to know that we are actually able to rise above these things due to our holiness and our ability to sacrifice. Let's go back to um, Enoch. Hallelujah. So now Yah is sharing these same things with Enoch that was just shared with Bartholomew or Bartholomew. All right. The Secrets of Enoch, chapter 11. Let's do 37. Starting at verse 37. Mm-hmm. And from the stone I hewed out a great fire, and from the fire I created the officers of the host, ten troops of incorporeal angels, mm -hmm. a fire and fiery weapons, and their vesture is a flaming fire. And therefore I commanded each one to stand on his charge. And one of the officers, and one of the officers, a prince of the a angels, prince of the angels turned away with the officers that were under him. Mm. And he devised a wicked thought. And what was that wicked thought? And it is impossible, it's impossible. to place his throne above the earth mm. for his power to be like my power. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And I cast him from the great heights with his angels. And he was flying in the air above the bottomless pit continually. So he hovered over hell. While the earth was still unformed, while the rest of the angels were in darkness for 40 years. Hallelujah. And so I created all the heavens, and it was day three. Hallelujah. A lecture on angels and demons. So this is how it all came about, and this is how we can discern the fall of the devil, the fall of the angels, mentioned in glimpses in the book of Genesis, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Isaiah. But to get more of a full context, 
we see that the angels were ministering spirits who were created to serve Adam, to serve mankind. But due to pride, blasphemy, idolatry, a rebellion formed in heaven. And Satan and the host that he had authority over were cast out. Let's go to Revelation 12. Hit Kalu, Revelation is 12. Revelation is 12 and 3. We are in the book of Revelations. Hit Galu in Hebrew, chapter 12, beginning at verse 3. And there appeared another wander in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Mm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Mm. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it were, was born. Let's go down to verse 7. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Mikael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Mm -hmm. And prevailed not. And prevailed not for the second time. Go ahead. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out. Right. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our Elohim day and night. Hallelujah. 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 So I'll show you a quick chart of the Maserot and the names of the angels listed in the Maserot. And then we'll wrap it up. So we have angels here. We have one, two, three, and four. All right. The first uh, angel listed, um, let's turn to the book of Enoch chapter 82. Enoch 82 and 13. The book of Enoch, chapter 82, starting at verse 13. Mm -hmm. And these are the names of the leaders mm -hmm. who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained. So we have angels that divide the four parts of the year. Go ahead. Mikael, Mikael, uh, no, Malkiel, uh, Malkiel, mm -hmm. go ahead, Malkiel, my king is Elohim, so Malkiel is the angel that divides the summer, I mean the spring portion of the year, Malkiel. Go ahead. So, Malkiel's portion represents, I'll put this in a bright orange here, the first quarter of the year. So, we have number one, number two, and number three, which represents spring. 
okay um uh where is it at now nissan is another word this is the original Mazaro. And then Jedi Yeshua updated it. So if you can see here, these are the four angels. So like this is one of the four angels here. And next to it, uh, sleek guy, you have a Hebrew phrase written. Called Hmm, this thing is not working. But we have the word Tekufa, which means revolution. That is H8622, which means a revolution, of course, and a time lapse and so forth. So we have four Tekufot, four courses, all right? So the first one is Mali L, I mean Malki L. The second one is Elimelech. Elimelech, okay, which means sprout of life. And that represents the fourth month, the beginning of summer. Okay. And then we have Maliel. Maliel begins the seventh month, which is the holiest month and starts our fall season. Maliel means to be uh, filled with Elohim. Mm -hmm. And the last one is near El. Near El, which means a lamp of Elohim. So these are the angels that divide the four quarters and we'll probably do another lesson to get more in detail on the Masero. But those who have the Enoch calendar, you're already ahead of the game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you to all of the family and all of the brothers and sisters who have supported the work. We are so appreciative. Hallelujah. Well, family, Shabbat Shalom again to you guys. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us um, on another Shabbat day. Uh, we pray that this lesson was edifying for you and that you enjoyed the lecture. Um, again, do feel free to take this time to do your tithes, your offering, and your, or your donations. You can do that at the website at kayashua at gmail.com forward slash Tithes and offerings, click on the donate button there and you can do whatever your heart moves you to do. You can also do that at Zale at Kayashua at gmail.com or at Cash App at dollar sign Kayashua. You can also go to our website, um, HebrewIsraeliteScriptures.com for any of your book needs, um, the Gold Edition, uh, the Book of Yahshua, um, Lost Acts of the Holy Apostles. Also, we have the new 2021 calendar, the Enoch calendar uh, for 2021 and 2022, so you can make all your plans for your upcoming feast days for the course of the year. So family, um, we love you. Uh, we're praying for you, and we just want to thank you guys for um, spending your Shabbat with us. Hallelujah. May the Most High blessing keep you and uh, prosper you in this new week and in this new year, and Get ready for Pesach. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.